Welcome to our webinar on video conferencing and actually communicating, I suppose, in these um, tough times that we're going through. Um, my name is Jude McCurry. I'm the CEO for SBRC. Um, and I'm delighted that our young and uh, bright and beautiful ethical hackers can join us this morning um, and have worked so hard in pulling this all together for us. Um, Two weeks ago, I joined as CEO for SBRC when the whole world was changing and uh, joined a team that I'd only met about 50% of them and some of them only for about five or 10 minutes. And then we had to make the decisions of how we're going to go forward with SBRC, how we're going to communicate with all our members, how we're going to get the message around resilience, around cyber crime and stuff out there and keep people staff and members and the wider Scottish community engaged with what SBRC are doing. So we had to look at some platforms, we had to look at a whole new way of working and engaging with people and it was all new for us. We decided on Zoom and we also use Microsoft Teams as well but Zoom predominantly for the webinars because our first webinar had over 500 people applied to come on and enterprise license only takes 500. Um, so we had to keep on that platform because we were getting 200, 300 people um, every time we did the webinars. We do know that there are security issues and um, we have looked into how to manage it as a business um, and we, we are going to stick by what we're going to use because A, it's easy, especially for somebody like me to use and to manage. Um, it gets the communication out there and it keeps people engaged and it's easy for everybody to use. What we want to do today is to give you comfort that we do need to keep the communication open and um, we do need to be able to conduct our businesses. We need to have meetings. We need to also be able to communicate with our families. If this pandemic had happened 10 months ago or even so 10 years ago, we would not have had the level of communication that we business couldn't have, have kept going and we also wouldn't be able to see our families. I use Zoom for, to communicate with my family in Ireland at weekends, um, some evenings and stuff. If I feel that my mum and dads are a bit down because they haven't seen anybody, then I just get all the family together from Dublin, from Florida, from Scotland and everything. We just kind of cheer them up and stuff like that as well. So think of the human element as well. Um, we need to support organizations that are using platforms like this as well and not basically say that they're making the wrong decisions because people will have made the decisions because of business reasons and also they will have looked into security, especially hopefully somebody like the SBRC as well. We've got all these people, great people working with us. And it's not to say we won't be hacked and it's not to say that things that bad people will not try and communicate with us or try and get in on, on our platforms and stuff as well, but we will try our best to protect everybody from that. So I'd like to hand over to Eamon Keane, who is um, the Deputy CEO and also Head of Cybercrime at SBRC. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. Just making sure that you can see me. Um, well, Jude um, unshares her screen. Yeah. Um, hi, good morning, everybody. On echoing Jude's comments, um, as some of you, it's great to see so many people online as we explore sometimes the controversial issue around um, web conferencing and some of the recent attacks that we've seen. Um, we're delighted that I'm delighted that we're joined by, by three of our ethical hackers who work for the centre and, and a product of Aberte University. Um, I think some of the recent attacks we've seen in regards to Zoom bombing and, and people are genuinely concerned. I'm already seeing questions coming in about good hygiene in regards to um, the pros and cons around Zoom, Snapchat, web app, uh, WhatsApp, GoToWebinar and other mediums. So we're going to have a general conversation about those and, and, and some etiquette applied to um, to web uh, conferencing. And I think fundamentally for me it has to be aligned to the business risk in regards to Yes, we are saying do not discuss sensitive and confidential or share confidential information over your medium. So um, we'll speak about um, why we are encouraging the positivity around web conferencing. And if we speak about the triad uh, or the triad of, of, of InfoSec in regards to confidentiality, uh, integrity, but most importantly, availability. So we're going to... Um, uh, speak to Jess, Mo, and Declan individually with the slideshow on, on the various mediums. We'll discuss the various mediums that are out there and the pros and cons. Um, the chat bar is available to you there to see questions in regards to, um, hopefully we can give you an explanation from a technical um, 
even a strategic operation or, or, or tactical perspective. So without further ado, you're all very welcome in these unprecedented times. Um, there's lots of um, coronas, the coronas orientated malicious activity out there. I don't see a huge rise in cybercrime um, in the last, uh, since the pandemic arrived, but we've seen that transition over to the likes of malicious apps masquerading as legitimate uh, coronavirus um, technologies. And sometimes they have a backdoor with malware um, there to steal your credentials or maybe even uh, generating revenues from premium rate services. So yes, there's a, an increasing amount of URLs and IPs and malware associated to coronavirus, which we can speak about. This um, webinar forms a series of, of webinars that we will be doing. This one is about uh, web, web conferencing, but we have um, one plan for next week and the following week, a little bit more about um, some of the other issues around staying safe, working from home, um, and other associated cyber security topics. So without further ado, listen in, and I'll introduce you to our first speaker, uh, Jess, um, to take over in regard to um, the pros and cons about web conferencing. Over to you, Jess. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm clearly not Jess. Uh, <laughs> my name's Declan, and um, we're going to be walking you through this um, slideshow here we've got prepared. Uh, just to echo what Eamon said, uh, we've got the chat open. Uh, if you do have any questions, we've got some time allocated at the end, uh, so please feel free to ask us. Um, but why are we here today? Well, this is a, a screenshot from an article I've seen from a few years ago uh, that said that by 2020, 50% of the UK workforce were going to be working from home. Uh, little did this uh, writer know that uh, it's almost uh, all of us at this point, uh, all non-essential workers that can work from home are working from home. Uh, so it's really important that we start considering security when it comes to us working from home. Uh, now that more and more of us are using our own devices, it's now becoming our responsibility, uh, personally, to make these devices secure. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass you on to Jess now, who will walk you through uh, the kind of do's and don'ts of video conferencing. Thank you, um, Declan. So as we all know, we're kind of in a bit of a, a, an unprecedented situation. Um, as Declan said, we've been advised to, to work from home where, wherever is possible. Um, and as a result of that, we are all becoming so increasingly reliant on um, technology, specifically video conferencing, whether that's from a, a business perspective, whether that's um, in education. So we're, we're seeing teachers delivering online classes, um, social gathering. We've had people hosting um, virtual stag do's and um, family quizzes at the weekend, um, even even to government, we've, we're now hosting um, our government cabinet meetings um, using video conferencing as well. And as a result of this increased reliance on technology, we've seen a massive surge in popularity for so many online platforms. Um, Zoom Zoom alone saw over uh, a one thousand um, percent increase on on their share price in. Um, the kind of past month or so as a result of the pandemic. So what we're going to be doing today, um, I'm sure we've kind of all seen the various um, stories that have, came, that have came out surrounding these video conferencing applications, their security. Um, has House Party really hacked your phone and stolen your bank details? Um, is Zoom really as insecure as it's currently kind of being portrayed in the media? Um, our aim today is to kind of dispel some of these um, myths and give you guys some practical advice that you can you can apply in when you're using these platforms. Um, and this is what we want to avoid, basically. And um, as we probably all saw a few weeks ago, the government are now chairing. Um, digital cabinet meetings and our very own Prime Minister um, put a screenshot on Twitter of the Zoom meeting that they were hosting with the ID right in the top corner. Um, we will go on to explain why this is far from ideal but um, just, just keep this in mind going forward, this exact scenario. Um, so, so just some kind of top tips when it comes to 
video conferencing um, in general, some, some kind of etiquette. Be aware of your surroundings, um, specifically when you're taking professional um, calls you might not want certain information in the background. Um, familiarize, familiarize yourself with the technology. So even stuff as basic as knowing how to mute and unmute your microphone, um, share and unshare um, your video. And just going on from that, make sure to, to mute your microphone when idle. That might seem like something very small, um, but especially when we're seeing larger meetings with a large number of participants, you don't want to distract from the person speaking. The last thing anyone would want um, is to be trying to get their point across and to be distracted by someone hammering on their keyboard. Um, and again, just respect your fellow attendees. Remember that just because these meetings are virtual now, the standard practices still apply. Um, and just kind of more of a security overview, just some, some general tips. Um, just emphasizing that point of being aware of your surroundings. If you've been on previous calls throughout the day, you might have um, a whiteboard in the background with some meeting information, something maybe relating to a client or an employee, um, or, or something more of a personal, um, personal information in the background, family photos, um, notice boards, things like that. Um, just, just be aware of this and make sure that you are taking calls in an appropriate setting. Um, protect your um, meetings with a password. Just to kind of make sure that people who are joining your call um, are who, who you would like to be. Also, um, this is kind of by a case-by-case -case basis. Obviously, if you're hosting a webinar like we are today, um, or, or something along that means you might not utilize the, the password protection. Um, but in general, make use of, of these features. Um, verify the attendee identity. Um, and this kind of links in with, with the point at the bottom there of using the waiting area. Um, you can make sure that someone who is joining your meeting um, is approved so that they will join the, the waiting area and then someone who's in the call um, will prove that they, they are meant to be there um, and just again familiarize yourself with the technology each platform has different security mechanisms in place to, to keep us all safe um, I'm just emphasizing off of um, Declan's point that this responsibility is now falling falling on us and if it takes 10-15 minutes to just familiarize yourself with some of these features that are in place it, it is massively worth doing um, and the don'ts. So don't use outdated software. As a result of this um, surge in, in popularity for these video conferencing applications, they have been targeted a lot by um, kind of researchers uh, and maybe maybe by hackers in, in a way, but, but just in general, there's been a lot of press about the security. So a lot of these companies are now solely focusing on producing security updates so the chances are that in the next kind of few weeks um there will there will be updates coming out that that patch a lot of these issues so, so make sure you're keeping up to date um don't transfer confidential files unless you know that the means you are doing it um it, it is safe and um, we we must remember that just because something's easy um, and you're on a zoom call and, and, it, and it makes sense to, to pop up some, some client um, information and, and send that to your colleagues or some um, personal employee information. If you aren't 100% certain that the security of that can be guaranteed, um, it, it might be worth considering using a, a different platform and one that you're, you're more confident in. Um, don't share meeting links, we will go into more detail about about this later um, but just remember that when you get a meeting link everyone who's supposed to be in that call will, will have a link and um, so so there's not really a need for you to broadcast this um this link on, on your social media um, if someone doesn't have a link uh, and they would like one um 
they, they can get in touch with with relevant parties. Um, and something that we've actually seen quite a lot of in the, the past few weeks is um, people photographing um, Zoom calls. So whether that's from a, a personal standpoint or, or a professional standpoint, we have to remember that your standard GDPR practices still apply. If, if you do want to photograph a meeting, um, make sure you have the permission of everyone on the call. We, um, as an organisation, were discussing this the other day that during a, a meeting, we wouldn't take our phones out and start taking, taking photos of, of everyone in the room. So the same still does apply to video conferencing and um, just, just be mindful of that. Um, going back to respect and our attendees. But I will now pass you over to um, Mo, who is going to go into a bit more detail about Zoom and just kind of give us a bit more of an overview of the security features um, that are present in the application. Good morning, everyone. Right, so yes, we this uh, next section, we're just going to have a look at Zoom specifically, because it has really taken off. Um, in uh, March or Late February, they're reporting around 10 million Zoom users a day. That is now swollen to 200 million daily users. It's become a big part of our lives and it's probably going to remain a big part of our lives going forward. Um, we'll step back a bit. Um, Zoom, a lot of us hadn't heard of Zoom. Basically, it was very popular with IT departments because it's very easy to use. Uh, and as a result, they rolled it out across corporations. And now that something like COVID has happened, we've all had to get to grips with it. There's been a lot of stories around Zoom, a lot of scare stories. Um, and we'll kind of address those now one by one, try and explain the technical reasons behind them, and then we'll go on to some of the things that you guys can do to protect yourselves. So the big one, of course, being, uh, hopefully I'm running. There we go. The big one, of course, being Zoom bombing. So this is a process whereby uh, people break into your Zoom meetings with people. Um, it's been attributed to hackers by some outlets, I'll not name names, but basically what's happening is people are setting up Zoom meetings that aren't protected in any way by a password, and they're either sharing their Zoom credentials, say on Facebook, and then people are clicking on that and getting into meetings, or as you're probably aware, Zoom meeting IDs are fairly easy to guess. It's four numbers, four numbers, five numbers, something like that. Um, so some teenagers, just because in the absence of anything else to do during the COVID outbreak, they are just guessing Zoom IDs and breaking into meetings to see what kind of mischief they can cause, uh, putting things that are inappropriate on the screen and things like that. The good news is though, although Zoom bombing has been getting a lot of press, it's far and away the easiest thing that you can deal with as an individual. Password protects your meetings and most people will simply not be able to get into them. It's as simple as that. Moving forward, uh, you may have heard about uh, another controversy around uh, Zoom allegedly sending details your users details to Facebook and LinkedIn. Again, the reason for this is not so much mass, uh, just a, an unfortunate drawback to the technology that Zoom utilizes. As you're probably aware, you can log into your Zoom account via Facebook account. Uh, in order to make that happen, Zoom has had to, had, had to use a load of Facebook's code, and that code stipulated that details be sent back from Zoom to Facebook. That's how logging in works. Uh, the controversy came from the fact that people who weren't logging in via Facebook were having their details sent up to uh, Facebook servers, but Zoom have now stripped that out. That no longer exists in their code base. And as Jess mentioned, you need to keep Zoom up to date. Zoom have said for the next couple of months, they are only going to be working on security features. But in order to benefit from those, make sure every time you run Zoom, you're using the most up-to-date version. And you can do that in your settings very easily. In the top right-hand side, there's a little gear wheel. Click on that, and you'll be able to check the Zoom updates. Um, Slightly more sinister astounding was uh, the fact that Zoom was re routing a lot of their calls through Chinese servers, uh, which of course raised alarm bells because the Chinese uh, security laws basically say that the Chinese government have access to whatever the hell they want in their country. So potentially they could have been reading uh, your messages and looking at your Zoom conferences. Why did Zoom do this? It seems like a major oversight. Well, as I mentioned, they've gone from 10 million daily users to 200 million daily users. Zoom had to buy a lot of server space very, very quickly. And unfortunately, some of that server space just happened to be in China. Going forward, they've promised to not do that again. Um, but more importantly, if you're a premium uh, Zoom user, that is to say you pay for your Zoom account, you can now choose exactly what regions you want your calls trunked through. So if you want to make sure that your calls don't go through China, you can specifically say, I want all my stuff trunked through Europe or North America, or wherever you feel that your conversations will be safest. Accessing archived Zoom calls. So this is a little bit more complicated, not really Zoom's fault. What people are doing is a lot of organizations are recording their Zoom meetings and then uploading them to uh, file servers or cloud services. 
so other people can go and review those calls later. We're doing that right now. We're recording the session and we're going to upload it on our website for people to look at. Um, problem is, when you make a Zoom recording, uh, it's automatically assigned a name by Zoom. And again, kind of like the Zoom bombing with the meeting IDs, those naming conventions are very easy to guess. And because people are uploading them to the internet, these Zoom recordings to the internet, what they're doing is they're putting them in uh, drives that are open to anyone because you know, they want to share the call for their employees to look at. What hackers are doing is they're just Googling likely names for Zoom calls and happening across people's Zoom recordings. This is fairly easy to fix. Number one, go into your Google Drive or whatever you're using to upload your Zoom settings to and increase your security settings. Set them to max. That will stop people accidentally being able to Google their way into your Google Drive. The second thing you need to do is just change the name of your meeting. When Zoom makes a recording, take the name of a file, change it to something else, and it becomes that much harder for a hacker or whoever to happen across it online. And finally, probably the biggest scandal for me was Zoom's end-to-end -end encryption controversy, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. The important thing here, though, is to remember that all of these things, while they could be put down to malice or incompetence, they're actually just design decisions by, by Zoom. In order to make a platform like Zoom with uh, video conferencing and webinars and hundreds of people all being able to see each other once a lot of very difficult technical decisions have to be made and this is a quote that was told to me by my, one of my engineering pro professors when I was do doing an engineering degree and that engineering is the science of materials and the art of compromise if you want to make something that's easy to use you're going to have to compromise on security if you want to make something that's going to be free for most users you're going to have to compromise on the quality of the materials that you're using zoom have made a lot of difficult decisions and they've led to what I think overall is a very good and actually fairly secure platform, but it's not the most secure platform it could possibly be. And it's not the best platform it could possibly be. So we'll talk about some alternatives at the end if you don't like the approach Zoom's taken. Although personally, I think the approach they've taken is pretty good overall. So the Zoom encryption scandal. Zoom used to claim that any conversation you have on it was fully encrypted end to end. That is to say, I would say something like I am now, that would be encrypted, the data would be scrambled and then delivered to you and unscrambled so you could understand. Unfortunately, that's not the case. What happens is, the, the top, uh, if you have a look in your top left, you'll see that little padlock with an E that suggests that this is being encrypted. It is to an extent. When I talk to you, it, this stream is being encrypted, but only to the Zoom server, where it's unencrypted, something happens to it, and then it's re-encrypted and sent to you guys. The reason for that is Zoom servers act as a kind of switchboard. So when I'm talking right now, only my audio should be reaching you. Everyone else's audio, regardless of whether or not they're being muted, is not sent to you at all. And this reduces bandwidth and makes Zoom a lot better. Problem with encrypted data is it's just garbage. You cannot do anything meaningful with it. It needs to be unencrypted on those servers in order for the server to do its job and act as a switchboard effectively. As a result, if you happen to have control of a Zoom server, you have access to any conversations that are being trunked for it. For that reason, if you're having a conversation that is super, super secret or incredibly confidential, do not use Zoom. It's incredibly difficult to end-to-end -end encrypt uh, video calls, especially when there's multiple users. It's not impossible. Apple FaceTime does do this, so that's something to think about. But no other application, major application that I know of, has been able to pull it off. And very few people use FaceTime, and I would say it's actually an inferior product to Zoom in many ways. One little thing I would like to mention though is when Zoom sent out encryption keys from the server to uh, encrypt its calls, they're currently not distributed in the safest way possible. It's not a terrible way. A hacker has to be pretty lucky to pick up an encryption key in transit, but it's not perfect either. So again, if you're having a very confidential conversation, do not use Zoom. But for most of the time, it's pretty good. Your average low-level hacker is not gonna be able to listen in on your conversations. Uh, there we go. So a couple of tips. I will bash through these as quickly as I possibly can. Number one, as Jess said, please keep Zoom up to date. They are working on security updates for the next couple of months. You will only benefit from these if you keep client up to date, obviously. Uh, number two, please turn on meeting passwords. Now, this is kind of hard to find. If you click the settings page on the Zoom client, you don't actually get any password settings, which is really frustrating. If you look at the bottom, you'll see view more settings. That will launch your web browser, and that's where you find the vast majority of the security settings available for Zoom. So I would heartily encourage you to please click that link and have a look at what's available. And first of all, jump into the meeting settings and make sure you enable a password. One little caveat, when you send out a Zoom meeting invitation, 
that bypasses the need to enter a password to enter a Zoom meeting. So make sure you only share those invitation links to people you want in your meeting. Do not post them on Facebook for all to see. Lots of people think that they can use the invitations and the password, but unfortunately the invitations override the password. That's currently how Zoom is set up. So please be aware of that. If you want to avoid this altogether, don't use invitation links, just send the meeting ID and the password securely. Um, Sorry, Declan, can you skip forward? I appear to have lost control. Thank you. Um, never share your personal meeting ID. If you're not a paid member of Zoom, when you sign up for an account, you're given a personal meeting ID, you can never change this. So if you're launching meetings using your personal ID and that ID gets leaked, that's it, it's public information. And whenever you hold a personal meeting, anyone with that ID could potentially access it. To get around this, just schedule meetings with unique IDs and keep doing that. That way, if the ID does get leaked, leaked it really doesn't matter the next time a meeting is held there will be a different id on it so please never share your personal meeting id and if i were you i would never use your personal meeting id and finally as just mentioned please learn to use your host features if you're going to be using zoom a lot take the time go through the settings see what's available many of you may not even be aware but if you look at the bottom of your screen right now uh, you can touch up your camera feed there if you go on your settings your camera settings there's a little button you can press and it will make you look prettier. You can also launch a green screen. There's a number of really quite fun things that you can do uh, to enhance your meetings. So that's Zoom. I will now hand over to Declan, who will take you through some alternatives. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mo. Um, so if after today you've decided that Zoom definitely isn't for you, uh, we've kind of compiled a list uh, of alternatives that we can go through very briefly. Uh, so first of all, it depends on what you want to use uh, your online or virtual meeting for. So if you're looking for more of a one-to-one -one kind of meeting, uh, you know, generally peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, so just you speaking to someone else, there's usually no third party involved. So these are tend not to be hosted on various other servers. Uh, we have a few options here, uh, things like WhatsApp, uh, Skype, uh, Signal Messenger is, is a kind of a, a largely advocated platform for privacy users. We also do have things like iMessage and FaceTime if you are on uh, Apple devices. Each of these has their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, in terms of encryption, uh, all of these use uh, mathematically sound encryption methods. So purely based on maths, uh, you're safe there. And then it comes down to you know, your trust in various organizations. So WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, iMessage and FaceTime owned by Apple, things like that. A lot of privacy researchers will advocate for Signal. So if you do want an independent um, and trustworthy uh, source, Signal is, is where we would recommend you go to. But again, all of these have been proven mathematically sound. So there should be no issues using them. Now on to the kind of more uh, kind of business level when you're having virtual meetings. Uh, there are various different alternatives. We have uh, Cisco WebEx, which uh, has kind of been popular before um, the pandemic hit in terms of business environments. Uh, Avaya Spaces is a similar alternative to Cisco WebEx. Microsoft Teams has come become quite popular in recent years. That's Microsoft's new uh, instant messaging and video chat um, software platform. Uh, Google Hangouts is, is Google's version. And then we also have Skype for Business and a bit of an underdog in the situation. And the, um, the whole group is Discord, traditionally used by um, kind of younger audiences, gamers and things like that. Uh, they have recently upped their video capacity from 10 users to 50. Uh, so it can be a viable alternative. Um, a lot of these are free. So Google Hangouts, Discord, things like that will be free. Uh, the others you're looking at maybe a more um, corporate subscription, but I do believe that some are offering uh, free trials during the pandemic crisis. So they may be things to look into. So to kind of summarize what we've seen today, uh, it is important to start thinking about security when you are doing these virtual meetings from home. As we've said throughout today, it is now the responsibility of ourselves to keep these calls secure. Uh, we can't rely on our IT suites if we're all working from home, unfortunately. It is important to think about video call etiquette uh, when you are on video calls. Uh, and 
and particularly security when it comes to that, uh, just be aware of your surroundings and things like that. When it comes to Zoom, we've heard a lot about it. Uh, I described it the other day to, to Jude and the team that there is a lot of hysteria around it. It's almost like the, uh, the toilet paper uh, hysteria, you know, yes, there are issues there, but at the end of the day, I think it is just, uh, it just depends on your threat model, what you want to do and what you want to achieve over these virtual meetings. Uh, Zoom can be, uh, and is a, as a viable solution for a lot of people, but it comes down to doing your homework, you know, just pick the right tool for the job, just research what uh, you want to use, make sure you familiarize yourself with settings on these platforms and uh, maybe make sure you set them up securely and most solutions you use uh, will be fine. So just finally, before we kind of answer some questions, if there are any, um, ASBRC are going to be putting out some more uh, things on Zoom. Uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully have some blog posts. Uh, I know there's a few others in the audience that have written some blog posts as well. Um, We'll also try and put out some videos on setting up Zoom meetings securely and various other platforms uh, if there's a demand for that. And very finally, if you have been victim to any uh, Zoom related incidents or just in general any coronavirus scams or phishing emails, we have set up an email inbox that you can forward them on to and we can help uh, make people aware of that uh, and um, pass that on to our partners in Scottish Government and Police Scotland. But that is it from us. Uh, Eamon, I don't know if you want to uh, close with something. I think you need to unmute yourself there. Yeah, sorry, if you want to share your screen deck, then, um, um, I'm just in, in summing up and, and going through some of the questions um, that we'll put out to you guys. Um, some excellent advice there, Jess, in regards to the security measures and, and what the landscape is like. Um, some of the etiquette, again, in regards to, um, you know, just even talking over and somebody and just making sure we're unmuting our button, but also uh, the thousand percent increase in, in Zoom alone. Um, and I'm sure that's um, reflected in other platforms. Um, some questions coming into us. Um, Thank you, Graeme, in regards to um, where has crime kind of moved in regards to the lockdown? Um, have we seen a move from conventional crime to virtual crime? And I would say yes, but uh, it's, uh, the rise has been, or the transition, as I said earlier, still business email compromise, still ransomware, still malware proliferation, but with COVID and COVID-19 uh, associated threat vectors. So it's something to be really careful. And again, um, we are just looking at, at a feed this morning in regards to 16 malicious apps. So we still need to exercise that, that care. Um, we've been harvesting data from, uh, from a multitude of sources and we're sharing with some key partners. And I see Alison Stone from the voluntary sector, our cyber colleagues there, with, and Alison has an excellent feed in Basecamp. So we're trying to share all that information out in regards to um, what's best practice. Um, Again, I think as we evolve, we will look at the alternatives and it's not all about Zoom, absolutely not. Um, we speak about uh, Cisco WebEx, we speak about Teams, and if you're in a 3.6 environment, if you have a 3.6 and 5 environment, you know that that's encrypted end to end, so it, there's, there's a, a, a better security around it. WhatsApp uses 256 encryption, so um, again, um, that has its strength for one-to-one -one meetings. So. Um, just in regards to, I'm just going to ask Mo, um, in regards to, you, what have you seen anything in regards to from a dark web perspective, Mo? I'm aware of one called Jitsi, and I know that would necessitate downloading some sort of a, a, a Tor application. But again, what's your, what's your thoughts on that one? Um, I wouldn't, <laughs> inherently, I wouldn't trust anything I get from the dark web. Um, even if it claims to be open source, even if you hear that lots and lots of people are using it, um, the dark web is a dodgy place. You don't even know you're on the correct website when you're using the dark web. It could be spoofed by someone else and you could be downloading a whole load of Chinese malware. Um, I think the point is there are lots of alternatives out there that you can use. We've focused a lot on Zoom just because Zoom has been getting a lot of press recently in this uh, webinar and we really should have information on some of the alternatives that, in the future. Uh, but no, I wouldn't be dashing off to the dark web. Those main, uh, communicate, uh, those main video conferencing apps that we mentioned today most of them, in fact, all of them are pretty good in most respects. So if you want to have 
regular meetings with people, I would just stick with those. Uh, stay off, stay off of tool. There's no reason for a law-abiding citizen to go there, really. No, thanks, Mo. And I think it's it's just that um, again, the question has been raised, and and uh, whatever reason you have to use uh, the dark web, um, again, I think there's easier and less complicated alternatives. Jess, um, we've we've highlighted some of the weaknesses around Zoom. Um, in regards to some of the com competitors, in regards to I've spoke about two five six encryption on WhatsApp, but um, any thoughts on the rest in regards to Cisco WebEx? Um, Teams, um, other alternatives, powwow, house party, for examples? I think a really important thing to emphasize when we're discussing alternatives is looking at your threat landscape, looking at what you're actually using the tool for. Um, like we've emphasized so much during this webinar, you need to just be aware of what you're transferring over these, these applications. Um, for example, if you're just wanting to FaceTime your friends on a Saturday night and have a wee chat. Um, House Party was, was really good for that. Um, House Party was easy to use, it was accessible, it was very popular um, amongst kind of young people. Um, but from a kind of business standpoint, I think that you've just got to very much research what you're using and make sure that what you're using is suited to your purpose and, and what you're discussing be aware of your threat model and think to yourself kind of put your shoes into an attacker if you're discussing something that's of high value and um, make sure that the system that you're using kind of reflects that and um, i think is probably the best advice that could be given in that situation Super. Thanks for that. And that gets that, you know, good advice to, to, to our, sorry, our, our attendees. Declan, um, over to you. Um, just in regards to um, a very important um, aspect going forward will be education. And, and there's a question in regards to how we can assist our colleagues in academia and schools in regards to creating a safe environment uh, for, or a VC solution for school um, and for school children to use. Um, there was a, a Zoom bombing incident yesterday um, out on social media and Twitter where our colleagues in Scottish Swimming were Zoom bombed, where there was some pornographic material was, was um, presented. And obviously that abusive content had, um, could have significant impact on, on, on the attendees. So um, in regards to a secure environment for uh, schools, any thoughts or suggestions? Yeah, obviously that's a pretty horrific incident um, that we've seen uh, with that. In terms of schooling, I would say the advice is pretty much the same. It, it, most tools and solutions are fine so long as they are configured correctly and I think it is important, um, particularly when it comes to schools, that teachers are also made aware how to set up, like for example, a Zoom meeting securely uh, or if they're using Teams. I know uh, particularly in Scotland we have, um, a lot of schools have uh, 365 subscriptions so Teams can be a, a viable solution there. Um, so just to make sure that they're, they're configured correctly uh, and the settings are, um, are as secure as they can be. I'm also seeing a question on GoToMeeting. I've not looked into that, but again, the advice is the same, is just do a bit of research on the platform, uh, make sure you know how to set it up correctly, waiting rooms, uh, passwords and things like that, and you should be all right. Uh, we at the centre will um, issue any warnings if we've come across any a solution that we would recommend avoiding and um, but so far we've not seen any that are definitely a, a no-go so we're we're all right on that front if i could just jump in for a second on that go to meeting i am actually a go to meeting user myself um go to meeting did have some problems late last year uh that were reported but have been fixed one thing i will say about go to meeting is it's not overly popular and it's not particularly well known about which does give it a certain level of security in itself for obscurity, so I would go ahead um, and continue to use GoToMeeting. I don't think it's a bad product. Thanks, Mo, and um, um, a nice compliment here in regards to your uh, is your green background. <laughs> um, and and there are ways, um, and I think it's just with playing with the technology in regards to um, you can adjust your backgrounds and import pictures and and enhance the image in in regards to what you're presenting in regards to. Um, just looking at the camera and a few things like that. And if, and if by example, uh, Mo has changed his there for you all to see. Um, 
a couple of questions in regards to yes, we are be, we are recording and and it will be available through a link at the Scottish Business Resilience website um, going forward. I see our good colleague from Police Scotland, Mike Smith, has highlighted that. Um, um, yeah, there are some people using Jitsi, and that's um, if you are competent around that. Well, that works for you. Um, that's excellent. Um, I'm aware that our colleague um, from Kate to all panel. All right, that's it. Um, is there any more uh, questions coming in? One or two more coming in, and I'll just repeat that we will obviously make it available, and um, we will share the links that um, we feel uh, collectively are probably the best going forward in regards to um, uh, web conferencing. It's a very dynamic env environment, as you, as you can understand. We, I'd also like to thank those, some of the participants are on in regards to uh, lots of our partners and collaborators have offered us um, to distribute um, technologies like VPN, password managers, and, and in these unprecedented times to keep um, um, our, our, our patrons safe and to keep Scottish communities safe. So we would welcome that engagement and we can be, um, we can be the distributor and, and informer in regards to that. Um, and that type of, uh, you have products out there, we're a dynamic shift towards marketing um, and some of our webinars that you may have been attending in regards to, you know, keeping businesses going, cash flow, and, and a few more things like um, uh, innovation and keeping the economy going once we come out of lockdown. Um, we will um, uh, have a, a series of webinars to, 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 to include things like incident response, and I call it the cyber hug. And you see three of uh, our excellent prodigies there in regards to what we're, we're, we're churning out from our, our universities and academic institutions, but we also have our trusted partners and our cyber expert group in regards to things like cyber essentials. Um, you may have a question about, you know, what hardware do I use from um, when working from home? Um, what is the best um, encryption to use and how do I go and, and deliver that? Please get in touch, we're here to help. The emphasis is on support. Um, incident response, cyber training, uh, career pathways, your overarching cybersecurity strategy and um, password management and something and, and lots more to go forward in that and we will distribute the links. Um, I'm going to give a difficult question to Mr. Declan just to say, um, but it's to you collectively. I have my thoughts on it, but um, I suppose if we're meeting, moving formal meetings um, from an internal business perspective on, what would you advise is the best way to minute your meeting now? So I think that, yep, that just comes down to, to you. Uh, obviously, be aware um, if you are sitting scribbling notes down on a notepad uh, and you've got that next to your laptop, that might create a bit of an irritating sound for everyone. Uh, so when we talk about video etiquette, there is the cyber etiquette, but there is also general video etiquette. Just be aware of that. In terms of um, recording videos, just make sure that all your participants are aware uh, that you're recording and uh, make sure everyone's happy with that and if someone isn't don't record it behind their back without their permission um but yeah minute and uh it's it's entirely down to what works best uh if everyone's fine recording it and that's probably better to to just go and watch back later on um or you could just type up some minutes or take take notes just make sure to mute your microphone uh, we also seen just a, a point from gary about the scottish government um apparently banning zoom um is that a knee-jerk reaction well i mean that's down to them uh, that is their decision and they've used the information they have at hand to uh, to make that call uh, at the end of the day i don't feel like zoom shouldn't be used uh, but they have obviously made the decision in their threat model that zoom doesn't work for them uh, i'm sure they've found a, a different solution that is is equally um equally capable and, and they're happy with that Thanks, Declan, and and uh, thank you, Margaret. In regards to a question here about uh, and a very good suggestion in regards to, I suppose the the laborious task um, um, of minute taking in long minutes, uh, sorry, in long meetings can be uh, quite quite burdensome. But again, um, we're recording this um, webinar to put out on the link, and again, you can always use that. But Margaret makes excellent suggestions there in regards to. Uh, assigning roles to people at meetings in regards to timekeeper, note takers, tech support, and other stuff. So um, it's 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 good to keep people engaged because, as you will appreciate, I think sometimes that can be difficult with eye to eye contact and engagement in a virtual space. 
Gary asked us a question in regards to um, security around go to meeting. Um, I like uh, my thoughts on that one are it's the same security standards around what we've discussed. But um, Jess, anything or uh, Mo or Declan, anything specific about go to meeting for Gary? Um, I, I think will, but... Mo. Sorry, Jess, continue. Sorry, Mo. Um, I think that Mo kind of touched on this briefly earlier. Um, he said that he's a go-to um, meeting user. Personally, um, I haven't used the platform, but I think that a lot of the advice that we've provided today is universal and can be up applied across the board. Um, so just make sure you familiarise yourself with the, with the platform. Mo, did you want to come in on that one? Uh, oh, only to repeat what I just said, yes. I I think GoToMeetings are, uh, is, is fine, uh, basically. Excellent. Well, let me see. It's uh, 10.48, so we're going to give you back 10 minutes of, of, of uh, and, and I, I think appreciate a lot of our living our lives on Zoom meetings. Now, we hope that was of assistance to you. We will send a link out to you. Um, and again, if you have any burning issues, any questions about the full range of topics from incident response, to etiquette around uh, web conferencing, to your strategy, to 10 steps, um, we're here to help. And not only do we have the excellent uh, speakers you saw today, but I did highlight um, our cyber expert group, a range of uh, CTOs and CISOs from lots of companies across Scotland and further afield. We're very closely linked into Police Scotland, the NCSC, the FBI, the Cyber Defence Alliance, and I could go more um, if I've omitted somebody there, um, I, I do apologise. So thank you for your attending today. I'll just ask um, the three of you, is there anything you want to pass on before I f just wind up? Just to, to quickly highlight, um, yeah, just to reach out to us at the SBRC if you do have any questions. Um, security is obviously very important when we're all working from home uh, and we're more than happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Declan. Jess? Just the same as um, what what Declan's kind of kind of said. Um, nothing more to add, but we are here to help, and we're all here to support each other um, during these times. And if there is anything that we can do to help, um, we are here to help. So, thank you, uh, Jess. Mo, just before you sign off, I'm just um, one thing that's in the back of my mind is, is um, fake news, and and sometimes. You know, um, we put out, um, I'm trying to steer the ship towards a positivity around um, engage and use these social media. It's a great way, Jess highlighted, I've, I even heard of some guys at a, stag, a Zoom stag party having a Zoom poker game. Uh, you know, so um, not just for, for business, but also social media, but uh, your social interaction and family gatherings. But fake news, any thoughts on that one? Um, well, same as any thoughts on fake news. If you read something, don't take it at face value. Just you know, Google it, look for a second news source. Um, if it's coming from a BBC, it's more likely to be true. If it's a website you've never heard on before, be suspicious. Um, especially with COVID, fake news is worse than ever. I think we all heard about the ibuprofen, ibuprofen thing. Uh, we were all told not to use it, it would give us COVID. And then of course, a week later we found out, no, that's not true at all. Um, so yeah, anything you read, Please don't take it at face value. Uh, be aware that people lie all the time. So take some time to verify. Uh, that kind of goes along the line. You can be anybody uh, in front of a machine. There's a question in there in regards to the, um, uh, not that we wanted to get technical or anything around information and insurance, just in regards to, we call it the, uh, the three main factors in information security, and that is confidentiality. Yes, we have to, um, we have to be able to communicate um, with a certain degree of con confidentiality. It has to be encrypted so nobody can man in the middle attack. Um, we have to make sure that we, we, we form that encrypted tunnel between, between server and client or end user. Or the other part of that is integrity and that follows in with confidentiality in regards to making sure nobody interferes with the data and um, making sure that when it leaves our system, it's encrypted in such a way that it arrives at its um, destination and it hasn't been um, manipulated in any way and the final part is availability and that to me I'm going to sum up with um, today's uh, webinar um, is it's got to be uh, available um, and and this is why I 
put out the positive message around um, our interactions in these unprecedented times. So it just remains for me to thank you all for attending. Particular thanks to um, our speakers. Um, I will see you shortly. And thanks to Claire for, for organizing it. Um, and the most important message of all, I suppose, is to stay safe and look after each other. Thank you and goodbye. Cheerio. Thanks, everyone.